I'm Lady T506. Welcome to my channel. Hello everyone's everyone's. I am here for The Passage Season 1 Episode 2. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're returning, you will family member, you one of my peoples, welcome back. So episode two another good episode but i'm telling you these whole like they don't want to call them vampires but if you suck blood to live you either a vampire mosquito or a bed bug so we gonna call these people vampires at this time being like the whole them going into your dreams and stuff like that i'm not sure how that's working but that would like really freak me out if i'm like having these dreams and this little vampire man dr lear he looked normal but he all in my head for some whatever reason i was like see you was out here trying to do something good for the world and it looked like you almost kind of destroying it but anyway let's start off Amy and Brad, they managed to escape the people that are following them. Like, Brad goes through a red, I mean, a green light, and it turns red, and the people that are following them get into, a, like, a little wreck. Now, at this point, you know, he got shot last episode, so he's running on adrenaline and adrenaline alone. So... I'm like, so these people, their whole sole purpose is to make sure that Amy is brought to this facility so they can experiment on her and give her this, you know, whatever that serum is. But, like, chasing them at full speed seems kind of counterproductive. But, like, what if an accident happened? Then you, there's no more Amy. We're going to get another child. You're supposed to make sure Amy and Amy alone is safe. They said, can we get another child? No, because Brad still knows all the information. So, he seems he sees some kids going on a field trip now. I have to remember this is a TV show. He's clearly in pain. And I don't know how the two teachers didn't notice that he looked like he in pain. But he says, I'm sorry. This is my daughter. You know, I forgot it was a field trip. I brought nothing along. Her name is not on the list. I didn't sign anything for her to be on there. So, um, she's going on a field trip, right? So, they just like, oh, sure. Yeah, let her get on the bus. And all the kids are like, who is this new girl? Like, it's a field trip day. But I'm going to tell y'all, there was twice when my first day of school at a new school, I went on a field trip. Fourth grade, Hebron Elementary, Evansville, Indiana. My first day of school, my class, we went on a field trip to, it was some kind of athletic club and we went swimming and all that stuff. It was fun. Then turn around the next year, because I went back to Georgia, then moved back to Indiana, my first day of school, went on a field trip, went to McDonald's, went to the tallest building in Evansville, Indiana. So my two of my first day of schools, I went on a field trip. But anyways, Amy sitting on sitting on the bus and all the kids was looking like this is a new girl. Somehow Brad manages to open up the back of the bus without nobody knowing and just sits in the back. I'm like, where was the teachers at? Because then one little boy was like, he got his phone out and Brad just took phone. We're not taking pictures. We're not doing that. But I'm like, how did the teachers not know that this grown man is sitting here on the back of the bus? I mean, was y'all on y'all phone? What, what was we doing that we didn't notice this? I was very confused. So they managed to get off the bus and find a new car. But Brad... He is no longer running on adrenaline and he's like, I need to pull over right quick and just like pass completely and fully out. Now we are in the middle of nowhere. Like we own a, almost a dirt road. Y'all know when y'all be traveling out of town and for like miles and miles and miles, it's nothing but country roads. You see like a cow, you may see a horse, you see a barn that look like it's been up for the last 150 years. They're on that type of road. So Amy has no idea who to call. So she ends up calling his ex like, Brad has been shot. I don't know what to do. I'm a little squeamish with blood. I need your help. She was like, just take your knuckles and rub on his chest. He pops up like, oh, snap. Like, what are you doing? Like, we can't make any phone calls. Ex-wife, I know you want to help, but you can't help. He ends up breaking the phone like... We can't call people because the people at her job are probably looking at, like, looking every move she makes. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. But she didn't know who to call because she has nobody to call. There's people chasing them. You have passed out in your own blood. 
Like, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. So, we moved back to 2015. And we see why Dr. Lear... That's his name. Yeah. Why he was so, like, anxious to get this cure. Well, 2015, his wife was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. So, he goes to Dr. Fannin because he thinks he's found a cure in Bolivia. Which we saw in that first episode where they was in the woods. With that right there was the first sign of... Maybe we shouldn't be going here. But he's... I want to save my wife. She has Alzheimer's. I need to help her. And then we go into a cage. A cave. Second clue that we should not be here. Signs were everywhere. Turn around. Do not go. Your guys like, I'm not going any further. I'm turning around. Godspeed to you guys. But this is dangerous. And we see what happened. They had a vampire dude in a cage who ended up died, uh, biting Dr. Fan. But now we realize, like, why he is... So, then just like so focused on that, I don't care what I do, wouldn't like all morality is just gone. And that one, um, the last inmate that was going to get executed, he was like, I feel more scared here than I did on death row. Like, this cannot be on the up, on the up and up because y'all wouldn't just, y'all wouldn't have, y'all would. You know, have somebody else, you know, do a little study. You know how they always have, a, like, a, a drug trial. Y'all wouldn't be, you know, experimenting on death row inmates if this was on the up and up. So, he already does not, he already knows something's not right. But, like, what can he do now? He's, like, surrounded by guards. He didn't already took the serum. He's running six miles and not getting tired. But he realizes, y'all, something's not right. So... Brad and Amy, they hide out of his friend's place in Wisconsin. Now, homegirl, she has security all around, cameras everywhere, an arsenal of weapons. Like, nothing's getting past her. And I was like, yep. Soon as I seen her, I knew that she wasn't going to make it beyond this episode. I just knew it. Like, she was, um... Oh, he was her student while he in the navy and in, in the navy, and before that she was a nun. And while um, Amy and I think her name is Lacey, they were out feeding goats. The ex-wife showed up. I almost got shot by Brad because she showed up. Security went off. He over there almost choking on food because like security going off. Somebody's here. Don't nobody need to be here. But she was like. Um, She's the only person that you know in Wisconsin, so I just took a hint and um, he was going to be here. So Brad's plan is he wants to take Amy to Canada and then to Amsterdam. But Lace is like, they're going to continue to follow you to get Amy and to silence you because you know too much. Like, even if y'all keep running, even if something happens to you or Amy, they're going to find another child. So, why don't you give me all those death row inmates and I can be a whistleblower so we can just hush this. Because he already said, I was going to turn myself in, get her face out there so now they can't do anything to her. But, you know, SWAT team people, they showed up and ruined that. And a lot of people died at the sheriff's office who didn't really need to die. So... They're about to leave, go to Canada, and I was like, yep, Lacey, this is your last it, because, you know, security go off, she gets weapons, he gets weapons, Amy and, you know, ex-wife did not catch her name, but I'm going to try to be better at that. Y'all lay low until, you know, everything is cleared, and Lacey ends up getting shot. Now, Brad was like, okay, I done lost, somebody was helping me, so he decides to surrender. Now... The whole thing was like, okay, while I'm surrendering, Amy and ex-wife, they were going to leave and get out of there. He was going to get killed to save Amy, but Amy was like, nope, you don't leave me and I don't leave you. And she comes out of the house. And he was like, you were supposed to leave. Like, is anybody else in the house? No, nobody's else in the house. It was just me and Amy. She was supposed to run, but we can't do that now. So, they're off in the car. Now... I want to talk about these last two things that happened. It's always some employee that just does not know how to act right. Just won't act right and just won't do right. And this employee, he's down there now. I'm not really sure what his job title was. But he was down there with the vampire people. 
and he want he likes to antagonize them. One of them was like, "Why are you treating her like that? Don't do that." But he want to be beating on cages. Ha ha! Look at you. And I knew that something was going to happen to him because he's wrestling with the other dude, the nice dude, and the nice dude's wallet falls very close to the cage. Like I go close to the cage. She's going to drain all the blood out of me. I don't want to die. But he goes over there, gets his wallet. Now, Mr. I want to be mean to people goes to the cage. And homegirl grabs him and sucks all the entire life out of him. And I just wanted to be like, see, if you had been nice, maybe this wouldn't happen. You want to be antagonizing these vampire people, even though we don't want to call them vampires, but they drank blood to live. So what else are we going to call them? Lastly, death row inmate prison dude is having a dream where Dr. Um, um, Fannin looks healthy. Homegirl that just drunk cold dude's whole entire body and blood. She looks healthy. They're at a bar. And like, okay, y'all want to drink? He passes them blood. Now, prison dude's like, you know, I, I don't really want that. I don't, I don't get down with the blood. You know, I'm, I'm cool. But he goes to leave, and the old girl just like pulls a poof out of his mouth like it was nothing, like all strength and everything, and just poop, tooth gone. He's like, you know what? I'm going to exit stage left because all this isn't right. Well, Dr. Fanning comes up to him and whispers something in his ears. And then when he does see Dr. Lyricate, he's like, um, I've been having some weird dreams. Do you think you can help me with that? And Dr. Fanning said, he's a friend of yours and I should not trust you. And I'm like, yeah, kind of because, you know, you were kind of in this situation because of him, him. But, like, if you wasn't for him, you'd be, you know, dead by now because you was on death row. But anyways, I'm enjoying this show. I want to see, like... Okay, they've been captured now, so what's the next step now? What's the process? So, if I left anything out, by all means, leave a comment below. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're returning, you a family member, you one of my peoples, welcome back. Go ahead and tell your peoples and tell their peoples to come up here and be one of my peoples. This is Lady T signing off. Have a good one.